On today's show, millions of people embrace the youth climate strike movement and call for action from the highest politicians around the world who are currently ignoring climate change. The Tesla Model 3 gets a top safety pick plus award from the IIHS in the United States. And the Volkswagen ID3 might just, maybe, be going on sale outside of Europe. These stories and more coming next. This is Ecotricity's Ecotech Roundup Show from New Zealand's only Carbon Zero certified renewable electricity company. We are 100% Kiwi and 50% community owned. You can switch today by heading to ecotricity.co.nz. Hi folks, welcome to another roundup in the world of clean cars and energy. I hope that you have had a fantastic week and you're enjoying the last bit of your lovely weekend break. We're going to start today with the millions of people who took action on Friday around the world to strike for action on climate change, inspired by the youth climate strike movement. Calling on political leaders around the world, those striking pled with leaders to treat the very real extinction that humans face today with the same urgency that they would treat any other global crisis, like a war. Having started my own journey towards cleaner, greener transportation because of a climate-related event, in my own life when I was a teenager, I hope from the bottom of my heart that these calls are not ignored as they have been for so many years. Our time's almost up. Zero Motorcycle has released details of its 2020 lineup and it's made the DSR Black Forest Edition, previously only available in Europe, a worldwide model. Prices have dropped across the board as well, with the entry level 0DS now starting at just under 11,000 US dollars. The SR, meanwhile, drops to just under 15,500 dollars. And the DSR Black Forest Edition, well, that gets all of the panniers, goodies, and guards that you'd expect on any self respecting adventure bike. The Tesla Model 3 has finally received its official crash test rating from the Insurance Institute for Highway Safety in the United States, and it manages a top safety pick plus award for its exemplary performance. Managing a good rating, the latest Model 3s aced every single one of the IIHS crash tests. But I should note that Model 3s built before July 2018 lose a few points for their older style headlights, which gained an acceptable rating. The Model 3 joins the Audi e-tron on the current model year IIHS Top Safety Pick Plus list. Volocopter has completed the first urban demonstration flight for its vertical takeoff and landing aircraft. The flight took place in Stuttgart at Daimler's headquarters and, says both companies, was a demonstration of how air taxis like the Volocopter could integrate with ground-based zero-emission transportation in our cities in the not-too-distant future. While Volocopter has completed plenty of flights in the past, this is the first time that the company has showcased its vehicles in an urban setting. Tesla has confirmed that it set a new track time at the Nürburgring in Germany with its prototype plaid Tesla Model S. At 7 minutes and 20 seconds, the Model S with plaid mode smashed past the record set by Porsche in a Taycan earlier this year. Although it set the record, it wasn't good news all the way for Tesla, and one of its test cars actually suffered problems on the track, resulting in it needing to be towed back to the pits. There's no indication of what went wrong, and I'm not about to speculate. Daimler has confirmed that it, quote, has no plans to develop any future internal combustion engines for its vehicles. Instead, the automaker says it's going to be focusing on electric drivetrains from now on. But this doesn't mean an overnight switch to electric. The lifespan of your average internal combustion engine in an automaker is about 10 years or more, which is about the time that Daimler wants its vehicles to be all zero emission. That's around 2030. BMW has confirmed what many of us had already known or suspected for some time. The BMW i3 electric car won't be getting a replacement when it ends its current production run. When will that take place? Well, the original i3 first launched in 2013, and if we use standard auto industry production cycles, that means it's due for a replacement next year. But with 13 all-electric models promised in the main BMW brand in the next few years, the quirky, unusual i3 isn't going to be one of them. Last week, the Volkswagen ID3 was finally revealed, and while many of you liked it, it was billed as a vehicle that would only be sold in Europe, with many other markets like the US getting its larger sibling, the 2021 ID4. 
But this week, we learned that Volkswagen is seriously considering bringing the ID3 to Canada. While Volkswagen North America believes a hatchback like the ID3 won't be a good fit for US customers, it does seem to believe that Canadians will most certainly be interested. It may not be US bound then, but this does hint that it could be heading to more markets around the world than we first thought. Ongoing industrial action by GM-employed Union of Automotive Workers this week in Detroit grabbed plenty of attention in the news as it was all about an effort to save several facilities from closing down. But while a deal hasn't been reached yet, GM is reported to have used the promise of building an all-electric pickup truck at the Detroit Hamtrak facility as one of the bargaining chips in a compromise to end the strike. The all-electric pickup truck would enter into production in 2021 as a 2022 model year vehicle. Arkimoto, the Oregon-based electric vehicle company behind what it calls the Fun Utility Vehicle, or FUV, has become deliveries of its evergreen FUV. We were at the event on Thursday night in Eugene, Oregon, and we got the chance to tour the facility where the vehicles are being made. Highway capable with a top speed of about 120 k's per hour and a city range of about 160 kilometers, these vehicles are designed for urban commuters and I want to have a go. I'm not sure if New Zealand's going to get them, but if you'd like to see them on Kiwi roads, let me know below. As we detailed earlier in the show, Tesla has been busy on the Nürburgring in Germany, setting new track times and obliterating the record originally set by Porsche in its Porsche Taycan. But this week we've heard from several different sources the suggestion that the car Porsche took around the Nürburgring to set that original record wasn't a Porsche Taycan Turbo S, but a lower performance Porsche Taycan Turbo. And say those same sources, the company is now readying the higher performance Turbo S to take on the Model S. The battle, it appears, is far from over. And finally, in the week where hundreds of thousands of young people strike for climate action, President Trump and the US EPA has officially removed California's right to set its own fuel economy standards and require automakers to build electric cars in order to sell in state. But California, along with all the other states which follow its fuel standards, and many which don't, have combined to sue the government in a 22-state action that promises to stand up to Mr. Trump's bully tactics. Given a new report this week by the EPA acknowledged that rolling back these standards would actually make it worse for everyone, I hope they succeed. We only have one planet, after all. And on that note, I'm going to say goodbye. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Tell your friends about the show. And if you've got some feedback, please send it our way. You can also make sure that you hit the notification bell and that will make sure that you don't miss out on our next episode. And as well, you should probably consider switching to New Zealand's only carbon zero certified renewable electricity company. It is super easy and quick to make the change. And if you do, you're going to be helping New Zealand towards a fully zero emission future. Go on, make the switch. I'll be back soon with a new episode, but until then, thanks for joining me. I'm Nikki Gordon-Bloomfield. Kakite! See you next time.